mouth of the big apple. Woody Allen has a further selection now of his favourite recordings by the clarinetists of New Orleans. Hi, this is Woody Allen, and this week I want to talk about George Lewis. Next to Louis Armstrong and Sidney Bechet, I think George Lewis was the most commercially appreciated musician to come out of New Orleans. He toured worldwide. There were great crowds that would meet him at the airport that would come to his shows from London to Japan. A superb, primitive clarinet player with a sound that's instantly seductive to anyone who hears him. It's one of the most beautiful sounds on the clarinet that one will ever hear. It's truly, truly beautiful. I'm going to start with one before he developed his most delicate style. This was made with Bunk Johnson to give you an idea of how he played when he first came on the scene during the jazz revival. The Bunk Johnson, George Lewis sides rival the Jelly Roll Morton Red Hot Pepper sides for the greatest recorded jazz. And this is Alexander's Ragtime Band, and it's an introduction to George Lewis on the clarinet. He solos twice on it. That was George Lewis with the Bunk Johnson Band playing Alexander's Ragtime Band. So when he started, he was a, a you know a rough and sexy ensemble player, and then gradually this religious style overcame him, and he started to play these beautiful, beautiful hymns. I want to play one called "What a Friend We Have in Jesus," and. The tone has an unearthly religious quality that's so pure and beautiful that it's mesmerizing.
That was what a friend we have in Jesus. And, you know, these guys were all geniuses, but they couldn't make a living playing music. So they all had other jobs. George Lewis, slight as he was, was a stevedore on the docks in New Orleans. And he had an accident. He was crushed by a falling crate or something and was lying in bed and finally recuperated and started to play the clarinet in his bedroom. They made some recordings at his home. And one of the recordings was a favorite tune of his wife's called Over the Waves, and this also was giving birth to this unearthly, delicate style that he developed on the clarinet. His tone is probably the most imitated by all the clarinet players that came after him, and all the young revival clarinet players imitate him all the time. They don't sound like them because they lack the pure spiritual quality he had, but listen to George Lewis playing Over the Waves.
That was George Lewis playing Over the Waves. And George Lewis's sound, which is one of the most pure and beautiful things one can ever hear in the New Orleans clarinet style, is apparent on hymns and blues. He wrote a little blues called the Burgundy Street Blues that he played all the time. He became identified with the tune and played it all the time. It's like when Sidney Bechet played Blue Horizon. It's a perfect blues, but of a completely different nature than Bechet's kind of sexy, dirty Blue Horizon. It's got an ethereal quality about it. It's just a beautiful, beautiful blues. And it's a composition of George Lewis's, and this is the Burgundy Street Blues.
That was the Burgundy Street Blues. He recorded it many, many times, and one can take one's pick about which is the greatest, if there is such a thing as the greatest. I, I played this one because it was well recorded. Now, another great recording of a hymn by George Lewis is Lead Me Savior. You know, I was saying before that he's imitated so much. He's deceptively simple. One thinks one can play like him because he was such a primitive and had no sophistication and played such simple chords all the time and simple melodies until you try and play like him. And then you find the difference between genius and not having genius. There's just a genius in his playing and his sound, something that I can't describe in his rhythm, in the tone that he's playing, this is George Lewis playing Lead Me Savior. Savior, very, very lovely hymn, and I wanted to conclude this week's program. Next, we're going to do a program on Jimmy Noon, another astonishing New Orleans-style clarinet player. This tune is a traditional tune. It's called Till We Meet Again, and George Lewis very often used to close his jazz concerts with this tune. He's playing it in a quartet on this recording, and it's a very clear recording. And again, one gets some idea of the astonishing beauty of his sound, his rhythm, his creativity, his stunning high register, his warm, beautiful low register, and how a great, great primitive 
can play a popular song like this and make the song his own.